Hello, I am Patricia Leonard, and welcome to my Hello Self podcast. It is a podcast where we discover more about who we are as individuals and what causes us, what are the drivers that cause us to behave the way we behave and to make choices the way we decide to make choices. So it's really about conversations with self, beginning to understand self more. And I'm going to be reading from a book that I wrote a couple or three years ago, and it's be it's called Becoming Woman. However, I'd like to say that it is not unique to women. It is a book journal that actually takes you on a journey, exploration journey, of who you are through questioning yourself about who you are. And the book asks questions that you can then contemplate and say, how do I feel about that? So I just want to read a little bit about the front end of this and make some comments as I go through it. And hopefully, It'll help you understand a little bit more about who you are and ways that you can go about discovering more about that. I believe that we are um, wanting to know more about who we are as individuals because it is such an important element of discovering our purpose and finding happiness and good careers that we love to do, not just that help us survive, but that we truly enjoy. So I'm just going to read from here and then occasionally I'll make comments. I'm hoping that it adds value to the time you spend on this podcast. I say that this book is dedicated to all the people I have already met and to those I will meet in the future. May the pages bring a personal search that enhances your choices when deciding on your career direction, choosing relationships, and determining your life philosophies. This book is written for females. However, the becoming journey is a process of transition for all. So it's not just about women. We all go through transitions. And I'd like to start this with my story that I've written here in the book that I helps, I think it'll help you see the journey that I have been on and what it has meant to me thus far. Come along with me on this short synopsis of my Becoming Woman journey. When I was just a small girl, I remember slipping on a pair of high heels given to my mom by a friend who cleaned the home of a rich family. I was so excited to strut around in those expensive designer shoes and pretend to be a woman. It was my first real experience of beginning to know who I was or at least to pretend who I thought I was and who I thought I was going to be. In those shoes, I was convinced I could do anything. The next vivid memory was when I was 10 years old, watching the women in my extended family at a Thanksgiving dinner after the men, the women eating after the men and children had eaten. For some reason, I didn't like that picture, and I wasn't that old. I was only 10 years old, but that picture didn't seem right to me. I was seeing and searched within myself for understanding. What is this about? Why can't we all sit down together? At that early age, I felt like some sort of a rebel was questioning that scenario. Into my teens and early 20s, I found myself doing what other teens do, and that is admiring the opposite sex, whether you're a man or a woman, and appreciating the attention. While falling into that typical and accepted behavior within me, a different picture was taking form. One of feeling as if I was selling out. Oh, but I wanted to fit in. 
Even with that inner awareness that something just wasn't right, I married, had a son, and my life continued on through my 30s, 40s, and 50s. Beyond what most women were doing in those generations. I mean, there, it was, uh, uh, looking back, it was exactly how I had been taught. Get married, have a family, and live happily ever after. Please note that I am grateful for those years. I was now, again, at a transition point for my life. I could continue living as I had been living, or I could utilize that learning, and I think that's what we all do. As we move along, we start to say, am I really happy? Is this really what I want, or am I just following a pattern that has been given to me and to my generation by society? I could utilize what I had learned and maybe make a difference for myself and other people in their becoming. By writing this book, I chose the latter. I wanted to help others and myself learn as I went along instead of just following a pattern that had been set. I think today in our society in the turbulent times, we are out of focus as individuals, needing some grounding. In the latter part of the 20th century, women and men got restless. That restlessness meant, restlessness drug them through sometimes dramatic behavior and anger. My approach to becoming woman is focused on diff a different transition model. I want to bring heart to the world. I don't know how to do that, actually, but I know that we need to face up any internal anger we have that walks inside of us and walk on a journey of love for all people and love for ourselves because that is only when it begins with us. That's the only way we can truly love someone else. Everyone wants to be loved and valued, including you and me. If you learn to love yourself and add value to the becoming of others, your journey and my life story will be worthwhile. Once you become fearless, life becomes limitless. If you're looking for a book that takes you on a linear process, then this is the wrong book. The Becoming for Each of Us is not linear. Therefore, the format of this book is to randomly share thoughts, ask questions, and cause you to step outside the expected or accepted path that you're on. You will find yourself at times asking questions, how did this happen? Uh, What's going on with me? Why have I made this decision? So get ready for a journey on a road less traveled when it comes to self-improvement. Not everybody, they'll, people will tell you, coaches will tell you, step one, you do this, step two, you do three, you do this, step four, step two, step one, step seven. You've got seven steps to discovering who you are, what you want out of life. Self-improvement is, yes, uh, uh, you may read things that help you begin to see uh, others' point of view and how they've done it, but your process is different. Becoming a person, a woman, a man, a teenager is focused on exploring who you are at the time of this reading. What's going on with me now? Why did I pick this book up? Who you desire to be in the future? and understanding that you have the power to make the desired transition happen. And I think that's the thing that most of us don't believe is that life is a gift and it is our choice on how we create that life. All changes, growth, and becoming begin with an assessment of where we are in our lives right now. So as you read, if you should get this book or right now, just ask yourself, where am I? Am I happy 
Are things going the way I want? Am I in a career that I love? Is this my purpose? And I think many people today are asking, what is my purpose? Why am I here? Regardless of what our vision is for the future, it is imperative that we become clear about the present first. Because then we can be, if you remember, Simon Sinek says, why? Start with why. Why am I even questioning these things? Why would I even listen to a podcast that talks about becoming? Why Why am I not totally satisfied with the life? So begin with the why and assess the why and the what. Who am I and what do I want? It is intended to prompt you, this book is intended to prompt you to slow down your life and evaluate the journey so far, not for criticism, but for celebration in looking back at where you've come and visioning the future. So it's kind of glancing back and seeing the learnings you had or the celebrations and the celebrations, I should say, and also looking ahead at where you think you want to go but, and then looking at where you are right now in the present, because we have to start there. How am I feeling? Am I happy? What is my why that I want to do something? I feel restless. So we have to come back there in order to know where we want to go or where life has taken us thus far and learn from our choices in the past. It is a tool you can use to coach yourself. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to go out and get a coach. We can use a book, just like this book, Becoming, uh, as a way to provoke our own thinking processes. And I like to call that a conversation with self. Someone once told me, Patricia, if you're going to be talking to yourself, don't do it out in public because people might call somebody to come and get you. So, um I know it's it's kind of a joke, but sometimes when I'm out, I will silently say, <laughs> I have this quiet conversation with myself. Why are you acting this way? You ever had somebody pull you pull in front of you on the highway and they don't even give you a signal? <laughs> uh oh, what is that? I just thought in my mind. It doesn't matter if we say it, think it or our emotions take us to some spot that doesn't feel right, that doesn't say I love myself or I love the other people or that I'm growing. However, if we notice ourselves, I say that's growth because we could say, yep, I thought you said you weren't going to do that when somebody cut you off in traffic again. But, um, you know, I think I like something that one guru self-help guru said you're we're human we're going to think thoughts we're going to get upset we're going to do those things but he said before it goes too far out in the ether say cancel 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 i don't want that thought getting out there <laughs> so this is a tool for coaching yourself surprising in that it places you in an improv so what you're really doing is watching yourself in the moment and responding to the moments as they are, not some planned event, but how am I behaving here? I thought I said I wasn't going to do this anymore. But you're in an improv event and you're looking at your emotions, your thoughts, your behaviors. So you're looking at all of those things and asking yourself, if I took just a moment here before I respond, would I have responded that way or would I respond different? The contents of this book are not intended to be walked through in one day. It is a process book. You can start at any letter of the alphabet. And by the way, the book is set up in um, chapter one, questions for you that I have written in this book, questions for you that are all starting with an A. Then chapter two, B questions, C questions. So they all start with A, B, C. It goes all the way through the alphabet. 
So you can start at any letter you want. If you want to start at A, that's okay. Remember, life is not a linear process. So you can start any place you want. You can open the book randomly and just put your finger on a page and on a question on that page and see what is the question I should be asking myself today? Or what is it I need to be learning today? So you can use the book any way you want to. You can open the book to a page and just see what is on that page that I need to be thinking about today in my own life or paying attention to. Part of becoming is the journey and experience. Is the journey and experience. It's a, it is not. Um, a step-by-step -step thing. It's a journey. It's an improv journey. It's while you're responding to your life in the moment, just as if you were an improv actor or actress um, responding to whatever somebody says or what you see in the universe in front of you or what somebody's doing. So go wild. Go wild. Don't try to stay in some little pattern Use this whenever you're out the grocery store and somebody cuts in line in front of you or they take forever because they can't find their credit card. How are you feeling? Well, just check it out. Question number one. <laughs> the intent is to ask you, the reader, to take the thought-provoking and exploring questions seriously or at least with purposeful thought as this book has the opportunity to change your future living and wake you up to a new life purpose. The premise of this book is that life is to be lived with your eyes wide open, your heart wide open, and your mind wide open, not with some set sequence that says, okay, this is what happens here, you know, just shove them out of the way, or my normal response is this. Many people continue as sleepwalkers through much of their life, just responding or not responding or responding in the same way. So they, they continue just as sleepwalkers as waking up requires taking responsibility for the outcomes. You know, we can blame everybody else we want for our life, but it, first it means looking at ourselves. Our parents, we can say, oh, well, you know, I came up in a dysfunctional family, so I never learned that or my husband, or my wife, or my kids drove me crazy. I don't like my professor. I hate going into that work. We create our own surroundings and our own journey. So blame yourself, <laughs> if you're going to blame anybody, but I wouldn't blame. If you were a reader looking for a lot of statistics, forget it, because the data that comes out of this book will be created by you. It's research on yourself. To get value out of a book such as this, you may decide to browse it on vacation, over coffee at bedtime or in the airport, but per or purposefully scheduling time on your calendar, or calendar. The intent is to encourage you to take time. We're all in such a big, busy time on our cell phones, reading those messages that don't matter at all, or texting somebody, something that we heard, you know, maybe taking some time for a meaningful moment and a meaningful conversation in our life with ourselves, not with somebody else. The book contents highlight an alphabetical approach, which I told you about earlier. With everything experienced, there is a new beginning. So, Every moment that you're living your life, the Eastern culture believes it this way, that every moment is a new beginning. We think it's an extension of where we've been, what we've done a minute ago and all this. No, it's a new beginning because you're acting in the moment. And so when you're acting in the moment, you're responding to what that moment is bringing in your life. It's a new beginning regardless of age, intellect, ethnic, ethnic background, socioeconomic situation, or geographic location. When a new direction is taken, a new beginning is inevitably engaged. So when you decide that you're going to have conversations with yourself about what is it I want, then remember you just stepped in to a new phase of your becoming.
So you stepped out of the old and you stepped into the new exploring. Stepped out of the that which is and you stepped into the improv of what comes next. So uh, I think that what I'm trying to say here is this book is not something that has all the steps in it, like step one, step two, step three. Each letter of the alphabet offers reminders and thought-provoking statements about life living and the pursuit of purpose. Becoming requires a periodic personal checking followed by purposeful action on a lifetime journey. So if you're in a, you check your present situation and you say, I'm not happy, then talk to yourself. Self, what would make you happy? What have you been dreaming of? I had a conversation with a woman today that was telling me, you know what, I remember when I was a little girl wanting to do television, wanting to do um, media of some kind. And then I just um, went on and forgot about it. And it keeps circling in my life. And then I remember a young man that was getting an award. I want to say Oscars, but I can't remember for sure. But he said, you know, I want to tell you something. For all of you dreamers who who want to be, because it was a film, it was like, I think it was Oscars. But he said, for all of you who have a dream, and he said, I did from the time I was a little boy, I dreamed that I would be making film and producing films. But then when I went to college, I got scared and I took my degree, got my degree in accounting. And he said, it didn't make me happy. So look where I am today, receiving an award for a film that I produced. He said, we're going to take the journey through bumpy roads, potholes, detours. And he said, but those are our choices. And it doesn't mean that because you made a choice at some time in your life that you cannot go back and get that dream off that someday shelf and start living it now. Remember Grandma Moses? made uh, started painting in her 80s they say so it's never too late to dream your dreams only if you say so so this book is about and i'll talk a little bit more about this in my podcast because this is what i want to do in hello self is help people individuals like you and me and actually it probably helps me more than it does you because you know they always say that we write about what we need to learn ourselves. I, I've talked to some songwriters and they say, oh, this is what was going on in my life. And so I think that um, what we share with others is probably more about our own learning than it is about others uh, learning. However, our stories, I do believe at the core and that the humanness at the core, we're all more alike than we are different. So I want to continue to tell my story and tell some, read some things like this from the book, maybe even ask you some questions to help you wake up to Hello Self. And I want to, I will be interviewing other individuals to tell their story. And then I'm going to be asking them what was the hello self moment in your life that caused you to go in this direction. And there may be several transitions because that's what life is about. We don't have to get on one road and stay there. Dolly Parton said, if you don't like the road you're on, change the direction. <laughs> get a new map. Do whatever. So I think that hello self is not a one and done. It's paying attention to our life and asking ourselves along the way and trusting that we know what we know. We listen to ourselves and then we trust that where we're going, because if you put up doubt all the time, you will always be fearful. And that's what this one saying was about. Once you become fearless, life becomes limitless. So don't put up things that cause you to be fearful Listen to your hello self. I always say there's an ego, the mind, 
will tell you, Patricia, you couldn't do that. That's ridiculous. And because it wants power and control. But I remember some sports fan, and I'll have to get you more detail on that, not sports fan, an athlete, said, uh, it's my ego, my calling ego. And this is from the heart, from the soul, from the core. That's the other part of our ego that gives us the courage to move on. You can do it, Patricia. So I always say that going on inside of us with our conversations is one part of the ego that says, oh, please, you must be serious. You cannot do that. And the other part that says, yes, we can. And I talk, the way I talk to myself is I say, come on, you guys, let's be teammates instead of fighting one another. We can all win. We can both win if we work together. Remember the old saying, it takes a community. So anyway, that's all I have to say today. And we'll talk more about Hello Self, Becoming, and conversations with yourself, either my sharing or interviewing others about their story. Because like I said earlier, I believe that there are elements of, my, of you in my story and elements of me in your story. And that's how we can be, uh, learn from one another is by listening to their stories and listening to how they got where they got. It may look like it was an overnight thing, but they went through a lot of detours, a lot of potholes. They fell in the some of those big potholes in, <laughs> that are on our roads today. So yes, but we get up. One of the country music singers a song is Riser, Dirk Spentley. Are you a riser? If you are, when you get knocked down or you get fearful, get up again and keep going. So for today, this is all I have from Hello Self. Until the next time, I'm looking forward to seeing you again and have some conversations with yourself. You may find something you didn't know about yourself.